Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. This is the part 1 of neurodegenerative diseases. In the next few parts, you know, I will be discussing the various neurodegenerative diseases. In this part, we will concentrate on prion diseases. So we will begin with the introduction of neurodegenerative diseases. We will look into the classification of neurodegenerative diseases and finally we will see what are all the various prion diseases. So what are neurodegenerative diseases? These are the disorders which are characterized by progressive loss of particular groups of neurons, you know, and these groups of neurons which often have a shared function. So that's how we define neurodegenerative diseases. Progressive loss of particular groups of neurons which have often shared functions. So the common pathologic process in all the neurodegenerative diseases is accumulation of protein aggregates and this protein aggregates accumulation is referred to as proteinopathies and this proteinopathy is because of abnormal protein homeostasis okay now let us understand why the protein gets accumulated in the given cell see the accumulation of protein aggregates is basically because of mutations or it can be because of environmental or stochastic factors now in mutation what happens the mutations can either alter the proteins conformation or the structure or disrupt the pathways that are involved in either processing or clearance of these proteins so whatever all these abnormality results in accumulation of these proteins so in environmental factor there can be subtle imbalance between the synthesis of protein and clearance so whenever there is an imbalance between the protein synthesis and its clearance there is a possibility of accumulation of protein aggregates right now once we know that the common feature of all these neurodegenerative diseases are aggregates of proteins we need to understand the characteristic features of these aggregates what are the features they can be classified or they can be categorized into two types one they can be large aggregates or they can be small or oligomeric aggregates right now why do we need to know whether they are large or small because the larger the aggregate they are not toxic okay the larger aggregates are not toxic whereas the smaller aggregates are the ones which are toxic to the given cell now another important feature is that these aggregates of proteins are resistant to degeneration okay and they show aberrant localization within the neurons and another important feature is that these can be taken up by other cell and then in that cell it can provoke ad provoke additional aggregation this is the characteristic feature of prions you know that's that's how prion diseases are categorized as they are the protein aggregates which are taken up by one cell and in that cell it provokes additional protein aggregation you know it's sort of infectious disease like process now histologically all these protein aggregates can be seen or always seen as inclusions and these inclusions are the diagnostic hallmark of various neurodegenerative diseases now how do you classify neurodegenerative diseases the classification is based on the primary functional system involved like for example it can be a degeneration involving the cortex or cortical degeneration it can be a degeneration of the basal ganglia it can be spino cerebellar degeneration or it can involve just the motor neuron okay so the degeneration involving just the motor neurons the cortical degeneration basal ganglia degeneration spino cerebellar degeneration and motor neuron degeneration so the cortical neurodegeneration usually or most of the times manifest as dementia the common example of the cortical degeneration diseases include alzheimer's disease pick disease and levi body dementia so the basal ganglia degeneration results in or the manifest as movement disorders and these movement disorders can further be categorized or categorized into whether they are the bradykinetic type of movements or hyperkinetic type of movements the bradykinetic movements means the movement is very sluggish for example the most common example of bradykinetic movement disorder is the parkinson disease whereas the hyperkinetic disorder involves <coughs> abnormal no hyperkinetic movement the example being huntington disease which has chorea or choreoathetosis now moving on to the spinocerebellar degeneration it 
manifest as ataxia and the common example of such degenerative degenerative diseases are friedreich ataxia the examples of motor neuron disease where it manifest as upper and lower motor neuron weakness examples being amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and spinal muscular atrophy so this is how we classify neurodegenerative diseases remember classification is based on the primary functional system whether it is cortical whether it is basal ganglia or spinal cerebellar or just the motor neuron okay so we can it is also classified based on the symptomatology involved dementia is due to cortical degeneration movement disorders due to basal ganglia ataxia due to spinal cerebellar degeneration and similarly upper and motor, lower motor neuron weakness in motor neuron degeneration now apart from these neurodegenerative diseases there is one important neurodegenerative disease which is a transmissible one and that is known as prion disease so now we will discuss what is this prion disease a prion disease is a disease which is clinically manifested as a rapidly progressive neurodegenerative disorder okay and the most important reason is it is caused by aggregation of aggregation and intercellular spread i talked about intercellular spread right see these abnormal proteins are taken up by one cell and within this cell it promotes further aggregation so that is what we mean by intercellular spread so aggregation and intercellular spread of a misfolded protein and this misfolded prion protein is referred to as prp okay now another i mean the characteristic histological feature of the prion disease is spongy form change in these tissues okay there is vacuolization of the neurons involved the prion disease of further categories are classified into these are uh, whether they are sporadic or familial or transmitted ones now the pathogenesis of prion disease now before we understand the pathogenesis let us see what is what are these prion proteins see the normal prion protein see this prpc c stands for cellular this is a normal cellular prion protein which is a alpha helix containing isoform okay this this is a alpha helix so the one in the bluish green is a alpha helix and the one is a red the one in red is a beta pleated sheet remember beta pleated sheet in the normal cellular isoform is less than 5% okay so the predominant component here is the alpha helix form this is a normal one and these prion protein the cellular form of prion protein is sensitive to digestion with protein sk that's important feature now what happens because of some conformational change this form gets converted to an abnormal form which stands for prpsc sc for scrapy okay this is a scrapy form of prion protein which has the predominant form here is look at this the predominant ones are the beta pleated sheet isoform this is the one which is abnormal form a characteristic feature of this abnormal form of protein is they are resistant to digestion with protein sk okay now we know the normal cellular form of prion protein gets converted to a or gets confirm because of some conformational change they get converted to an abnormal beta pleated isoform okay now big i told you conformational change resulting in the normal form to an abnormal form now what happens when these abnormal forms aggregates so aggregation or accumulation of these abnormal forms results in the vacuolization of cytoplasm okay how the vacuoles are formed is actually not known but what is known is they form lots and lots of cytoplasmic vacuoles in the neurons resulting in death of these neurons okay now we know that there is a conformational change which results in the norm which results in normal to an abnormal form now what are the causes of this conformational change see this conformational change can be spontaneous okay it can form at the low rate okay spontaneous and low rate the common example of this disease is the sporadic cases of creutzfeldt jakob disease so the mutations in the prpc gene okay there is high rate of conversion of prpc into prpsc and the examples involving mutations are the familial forms of creutzfeldt jakob disease gerstmann strasler schenker syndrome and fatal familial insomnia 
Now let us see what is this Creutzfeldt Jakob disease. So this is the most common prion disease, clinically characterized by rapidly progressive dementia and it has peak incidence in the seventh decade of life. It is also shown that this can be transmitted iatrogenically, for example, during corneal or dural transplantation. It can be you know, transmitted via deep implantation of electrodes in the brain or by administration of contaminated preparations of cadaveric human growth hormone. These are the three instances where this disease, the CJD, can be iatrogenically transmitted. Now, this Creutzfeldt Jacob disease can be sporadic, can be familial or it can be variant form of CJD. The sporadic forms involves 90% of CJD cases where there is subtle changes in the memory and behavior. Whereas the familial forms are the more, I mean the familial forms are the ones which are resulting due to the mutations in the PRNP gene. This PRNP is the gene that encodes the prion protein. Okay, So whenever there is a mutation and that results in, I told you it is a high rate of conversion of normal to abnormal form, it results in rapidly progressive dementia. Okay, And they also manifest with startled myoclonus. Now what is this startled myoclonus? This is an involuntary sudden jerky movement, you know, which is stimulated, which is evoked by a sudden or unexpected acoustic stimulus. So there is sudden involuntary movement that is called as startled myoclonus. The third variant, third form is a variant form of CJD, which is caused due to exposure to bovine form of spongiform encephalopathy. How is this disease transmitted? It's transmitted by consumption of contaminated food or by blood transfusion from patients who are in the preclinical stage of CJD. Okay, so this is how the variant form of CJD is transmitted. But what is important is that there is no treatment for Creutzfeldt Jacob disease. There is no treatment for any prion disease for that matter. The average survival is around seven months after the onset of symptoms. Now, what is the morphological, what are the morphological features of CJD? Morphologically, if you can see these illustrations, you can easily make out that there is crossly evident atrophy of the brain. You can make out, right? So, this is a normal outline of the normal brain and you can make out that there is shrinkage of the brain and this is a normal brain and this is the brain of CJD showing atrophy of the brain parenchyma. You can also see evidence of ventricular dilatation. So grossly there is evident brain atrophy. Okay, Microscopically as I told you the characteristic feature is the spongiform change. Now what is this spongiform change? This spongiform change you find empty vacuoles of varying sizes. You can make out these vacuoles of varying sizes right and these vacuoles are often located within the neuropil within the cytoplasm within the neuropil or in the pericarion okay it can be within the neuron it can be in the uh, you know, axons it can be in the dendrites or in the neuropil or it can be seen in the pericarion now ultra structurally it is found that these vacuoles are actually membrane bound vacuoles right it is limited by membrane now what happens in advanced cases is that these vacuoles fuse together to form larger cyst like spaces and this condition is referred to as status spongiosis now the abnormal prion protein prpsc can also be seen as extracellular aggregates okay usually in the cerebellum and these extracellular aggregates of abnormal prp they are called as kuru plaques how do you demonstrate these kuru plaques they can be stained by either congo red or pa stains it stains both congo red and ps both are positive okay and finally immunohistochemistry is done to demonstrate this abnormal prpsc right so your demonstration of protein is k resistant prpsc or the scrapey form of prion protein by immunohistochemistry so that completes the prion diseases the most common prion disease, Creutzfeldt, Jacob disease, we have discussed. And that's about the neurodegenerative diseases part one. In the next part, I'll be discussing about the cortical uh, neurodegenerative diseases, that's Alzheimer's disease. Stay tuned. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button. Do comment. Don't forget to subscribe. And please do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.